Turning our focus now to the day's big story, it's been seven days since the Hindenburg report on the Adani group was made public, sending its stock into a tailspin. But today, some Adani stocks have rebounded, reversing the five-session trading trend. They're trading roughly 3.7% higher now, after they fell as much as 35% earlier in the session, hitting a 52-week low. Now let's in fact also show you the three stocks of Adani and how they managed to stage a recovery today. Here are the three stocks which had been placed on the additional surveillance list by the NSE. So let's in fact go across to Ziad who will take us through the details of uh, the stock performance. In fact, my, I beg your pardon, let's go across to Rohit Srivastava who will take us through how the Adani stocks have actually been performing since the Hindenburg report was made public on the 24th of January. Yes, Rohit. Yes, Siddharth. In fact, we've been seeing over the last one week the kind of volatility in the Adani Enterprises stocks. But there appears to be some respite today for the investors of the Adani group. Because here we see Adani Enterprises. Remember, this is the company where, uh, which went on the FPO, which was eventually cancelled. But uh, if I can take you through the details here. Today, the market opened at 1,490. Then the day's low, it went down to as low as 1,017. But it closed at 1,592, which is a rise of 1.7. 4% from the opening rate of, from, of today for the Adani Enterprises. This is that company which went on the FPO which was eventually cancelled. Then Adani Ports. Now this is a company that has a revenue of about 18,000 crore rupees per year. Right? Annual revenue, Adani Ports. It started at 459. It went down to as low as 395 today. But finally it closed at 502 which is a rise of 8.67%. 8.67% from uh, the day's uh, opening. And if I can take you through Ambuja Cements, it started off at 351.95. It went down to as low as 318.5. This is the day's lowest, but it closed at 373.55, which is a rise of nearly 6% from the day's opening. So a little bit of a respite for the Adani group and also for the investors today because all three of these stocks have risen. Many thanks for taking. Uh, through uh, taking us through those details, uh, Rohit, very comprehensive indeed. A slight rebound as far as at least three stocks of the Adani entities are concerned. Now, for the first time since the Hindenburg shelling on the 24th of January, the finance minister, Nirmala Sitaraman, has broken her silence. Assuaging fears of life savings uh, of the common man being wiped out due to the exposure of both LIC as well as the State Bank of India to Adani stocks, the finance minister has said that LIC and SBI's Adani exposure is within a permissible limit. The LIC is still sitting on a profit despite uh, the fall in the Adani stocks. The Indian banking system is at a fairly stable and comfortable level. This is what Nirmala Sitaraman said and added that regulators are very stringent about uh, the matter of regulatory governance when it comes to the stock market. Now remember that this reversal of Adani stocks fortunes was partly due to two ratings agencies which came out uh, with uh, a fairly uh, balanced position as far as the stock performance of Adani is concerned. They saw no reason to downgrade the companies given its cash flow as well as its assets and this is what Fitch actually said. It said that there's no near-term significant offshore bond maturities reducing uh, financing risks or liquidity risks. There's been no immediate impact on the ratings of Fitch-rated Adani entities in particular. Securities expects no material changes to its forecast for cash flow and the ongoing monitoring will be looking closely at any major changes in this particular matter as well. Now even the SBI chairperson has said that there's no need to panic at this point in time since he does not envisage any problem in recovering the debt obligations on the part of the Adani group. Now ratings no. agencies lent to Adani for projects which are uh, in fact uh, having uh, tangible assets and which are having adequate cash generation and uh, they have been in a position to meet their obligations and as far as the quantum is concerned that is actually just about 0.8-0.9% about of our total loan book. So from that point of view we don't envisage any kind of a challenge in terms of their ability to service the loan obligations which they have taken. So, uh, and also we have not extended any loan against loan against shares, etc. There is no such 
portfolio which we have. So the impact of uh, the stock market prices of uh, the stocks will not really impact uh, any of the margin calls, etc., and any of the uh, loans which they have raised from us. As I mentioned, that it is all against uh, sets which are cash generating and which are uh, having, uh, 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 I mean, excellent track record in terms of the repayment in the past. Now, the ratings agency's report did not dampen the opposition's outrage. However, they continued to disrupt the ongoing budget session of parliament demanding a debate as well as a JPC probe uh, in this particular matter or at the very least a probe that is court monitored. Let's listen to what the opposition had to say. We want a discussion on the Adani scam which has taken over when Adani uh, shares are falling in that time also, their FIO, they had uh, SBI and uh, LIC has uh, pumped the money into the Adanis. But if they are not giving this work, then why are they sitting in parliament? This is our Vipakshi, all the parties. There is no different grain. All the parties are saying that this is an urgent chapter. This is a matter of looting. If there is LIC, State Bank, ये दोनों जो सार्वजनिक उपक्रम है उसको लूटने की बात है जनता का पैसा है गरीबों का पैसा है बाकी वो कंपनी क्या करती है मुझे मालूम नहीं इफ सेबी वुड हैव डन इट्स जॉब डिलीजेंटली विदाउट बीइंग अंडरमाइंड बाय द करंट गवर्नमेंट वी वुड नॉट हैव हैड टू फेस द सिचुएशन वी फेसिंग द सिचुएशन बिकॉज सेबी वॉज कॉट स्लीपिंग आरबीआई वॉज इग्नोरिंग स्टॉक मार्केट सब गिविंग यू द रिप्लाई स्टॉक मार्केट दे आर टेलिंग दैट दैट इंडिया वेल सेकंड बिगेस्ट रिचेस्ट बाय Allegations against Adani is of serious nature. That should be examined threadbare and proper appropriate actions should be taken. So let's take this across to our guest. Monica Verma, political and strategic affairs expert, is joining us, as does Mr. Rajat Sethi, author and economist. Mr. Salim Dharni Dharan, a spokesperson of the DMK, is also with us, as is Mr. Ravi Srivastav, political analyst as well. Uh, Ms. Verma, coming to you first, uh, do you believe that the criticism uh, that has been leveled at uh, the RBI as well as the SEBI so far, in terms of what many have described as their inaction and also the lack of a prompt response in the immediate aftermath, of the Hindenburg report, do you believe that criticism is warranted? I believe, you know, as a democracy and as a very, very uh, healthy financial market that India is, uh, any sort of criticism is welcome. And, you know, uh, such instances, uh, something that has happened to Adani, uh, can serve as a very good opportunity uh, for us to, you know, look further and introspect further that, you know, whether uh, SEBI or other uh, financial regulation mechanisms are not... Uh, working as efficiently as they should be. So, uh, you know, I have that uh, type of, uh, you know, understanding when it comes to something uh, of this sort. Because, you know, uh, consistently we are looking at how the right. stock market uh, is giving the response to the Hindenburg report. And as a functioning democracy, uh, where transparency is valued, where we are, you know, we are literally proud of all our institutions, okay. I think it will be a good message that will go out to the international investor community that, uh, you know, if something like this is uh, pinpointed, something like this is, you know, it surfaces, then the Indian financial institutions and the regulation okay. mechanism Let's, let's take this across to Mr. Rajat Sethi as well. Mr. Sethi, what do you make of the uh, relative reticence uh, on the part of our regulatory agencies here after the Hindenburg report was made public? Well, I think, uh, uh, I mean, I can only guess, I'm not the spokesperson of SEBI, but, uh, you know, their uh, their approach would have been that, you know, they need to proceed, find those facts without spoking the market, you know, and unnecessarily uh, causing panic among the investors and everybody uh, having a collateral damage in this process would be bearing upon the mind of SEBI. But nonetheless, uh, 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 it is the principal job of SEBI only to come out. And uh, in a time-bound manner, 72 hours or, or, or whatever days they want, to give us at least an interim uh, report as to uh, how fair are the allegations against the Adani group. And uh, perhaps that's the only way you can quieten the, uh, the bloodbath that is happening on the stock market vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Adani stocks. Uh, oh, there's no other oh. shortcut to it and there's no other way out. Uh, I don't agree with the opposition trying okay. to make this a political okay. issue unnecessarily by pulling in JPC demand. Hmm. Uh, essentially, it has to be dealt by technical folks who understand how finance works, who understand how market manipulations work. 
Okay, let me take this across to Mr. Salim Dharni Dharan, spokesperson of the DMK as well. Uh, the finance minister has finally spoken, Mr. Dharni Dharan, and she said that as far as the exposure of both the LIC and SBI, both of course public sector entities, uh, the investments that they've made appear to be fairly safe uh, and they're within a certain controllable and a permissible limit and that the governance as far as regulatory authorities is concerned in India is stringent and robust. What's your response to that? See, I think the SEBI has absolutely not done uh, done its job because there have been some mysterious uh, transactions that has come into Adani group of companies. For example, Emerging Market Investment, DMCC, which lists no employees, has apparently has links to the uh, brother of uh, uh, Adani and then has invested 10,000 crores, 5,000 crores in order to uh, do wash trading, that is to um, increase the demand of the shares and to increase its uh, price. And secondly, LIC right, has invested a lot of money in uh, Adani group of company. That's fine. But the problem here is when it comes to domestic institutional investors, 90% of the money is invested only by LIC. Why has other institutional investors not invested in uh, Adani? Why has mutual funds stayed away? That is also uh, also has to be answered. Okay. And thirdly, five uh, shell companies in Mauritius have invested about 1 lakh crores that is about 15% in Adani group of companies. And these companies do not have employees. They have not invested before Adani and after Adani. Right. And all the investments are in Adani group of companies. Let me, let me so go across to Ravi Srivastava as well. Mr. Srivastava, uh, like Mr. Sethi said, that uh, his claim basically is that this demand for a Supreme Court monitored probe or a JPC uh, is slightly misplaced at this point in time. This should actually be best left to the regulatory authorities with some level of domain expertise in this matter to examine this uh, in thorough detail. What's your response? Uh, Siddharth, I don't no. agree with him or for that matter, there should be a JPC, there should be a thorough inquiry. M my question here is, why India's story is so fragile that one Hindenburg report can wash out number two world businessman to the extent of 55%? Something somewhere is seriously wrong. And who is sleeping? The SEBI is sleeping. The RBI is snoring. Right. And all these assurances by... Right. The, the only consensus that has SBI. emerged out of this very short discussion on this controversy is the fact that SEBI should actually come out uh, and make its views known and give a fairly detailed statement about what kind of action it wishes to initiate and examine uh, this in a much more thorough manner. So let's uh, thank you for all our guests for joining us uh, on this particular debate. Uh, we'll slip into a short break for now. We'll come back with more on the other side.